Welcome to worship this Sunday of the reign of Christ the King. We come to you from Nipwa United Anglican Shared Ministry, and it is a joy and a delight to know that we have been welcomed into your hearts and your homes. During this time of pandemic and our code red status here in Manitoba, we all feel the separation from friends and loved ones. Please know that through God, we are spiritually connected and that we here at the church are praying for you. If you have specific needs, we invite you to call the office 476-5881 and we will gladly include those in our daily prayers. We begin this morning's worship service with our welcome and call to worship. Around the world this day, the Universal Church celebrates the reign of Christ the King. Christ Jesus, a friend of the poor, the meek, and the merciful, has been enthroned above all authority and power in this world and in the world that is to come. God has placed everything under Christ's wounded feet, appointed the one who wore a crown of thorns as the supreme head of the church, his body. Let us worship God eternally the heavenly and royal gates with thanksgiving and praise, giving thanks to our heavenly and almighty sovereign. We have Carolyn on the piano this morning and give thanks for her gifts. And she will lead us in our opening hymn, number 235 in Voices United, number 380 in Common Praise, O oh, Worship the King. I'm going to invite Nancy forward to light the Unity Paschal Christ candle with me. Let us pray. O oh God, set our hearts on fire with love for you. And as light comes from this candle lit by our unity, 
May the blessing of Jesus Christ come to us, warming our hearts and brightening our way. May Christ our Savior bring life into the darkness of this world through our love. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, as we prepare to worship Almighty God, let us with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by God's infinite goodness and mercy. I invite you to join me at home. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Alleluia. This morning we use the Venite to draw our prayers together. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence of the Lord with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to God with psalms. For you, O Lord, are a great God and a great sovereign above all gods. In your hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are yours also. The sea is yours, for you made it and your hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord, our Maker. For you are our God, and we are the people of your pasture and the sheep of your hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to your voice. Amen. I would invite Nancy back to the lectern to read our lessons from Scripture. Good morning. Our first reading is a reading from the book of Ezekiel 34, verses 11 to 16 and 20 to 24. Thanks be to God. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries, and I will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the watercourses, and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. They, there they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on the rich pasture of the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the stray, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. But the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide, I will save my flock and they shall no longer be ravaged. And I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. 
He shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 100. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come into the divine presence with a song. Know this, the Lord, the Lord is God, the one made us and to whom we belong. We are God's people, the sheep of God's pasture. Enter the gates of the Lord with thanksgiving. Go into these courts with praise. Give thanks to God and call upon the name of the Lord, for the Lord is good whose steadfast love is everlasting, and whose faithfulness endures from age to age. Together, let's say the psalm prayer. God, our sovereign, you have created us as your people, and you sustain us with your hand. Help us always to give you thanks for you alone are worthy of thanksgiving and praise and honor, now and forever. Amen. Our second reading is from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. I have heard of your faith in Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, and for this reason I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of his great power. God put this power into Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things of the church, which is his body, the fullness of him, who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Thank you, Nancy. <laughs> Our gradual hymn is taken from Voices United, number 213, Common Praise 379, Rejoice, the Lord is King.
A reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25, beginning in the 31st verse. Jesus said, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick, and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty, or stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it for one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us bow our heads to pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be ever acceptable in thy sight, dear Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. May only your truth be spoken here, God, and only your truth heard. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. As Christians who observe the calendar that is set before us, times throughout the year, lectionary laid out before us in a three-year cycle, each year we are reminded of a fundamental facet of our faith, that God in Christ is to be our beginning and our end. Today we come to the end of our Christian calendar year. Next Sunday, with the first Sunday of Advent, we begin a new calendar year. With that, we have a bookend of our Savior. Jesus begins our year as we prepare in Advent to celebrate his birth among us, and ends our year with the celebration today with the reign of Christ the King. This is easy enough for us as we understand in Canada the idea of sovereignty, the idea of a monarchy, a king or a queen. And so for us today it is easy enough to worship God, to worship Jesus Christ as our sovereign. Good enough. Yea, King Jesus, done and dusted. Amen. Not enough? Not enough. I dare say Jesus wants more, too. You see, my friends, Oftentimes, when there is understanding, 
such as the sovereignty of God in our lives, that basic understanding, especially as Canadians who have an earthly sovereign, Queen Elizabeth II, there is this temptation to have it done and dusted. Good enough, short and sweet. Yay, King Jesus, reign of Christ the King Sunday, another one in the books. What more need we say? Those of you who share my interest in the monarchy will know that it is never enough. All things royal pique my interest. All things about the royal family in every age, not just the modern royal family, makes me sit up and take interest. I will freely admit that I have probably what is too large a portrait of Queen Elizabeth II in my office. I will also admit that I have a picture of the Queen in my home. However, it is significantly smaller as my wife does not share my enthusiasm for the monarchy. It's nothing she has against the monarchy, but uh, not quite as enthusiastic as I. Even though she shares a birthday with Queen Elizabeth II. Some might argue that that had something to do with uh, my connection with my wife. I promise you it didn't. Just an interesting happenstance, but one that I enjoy nonetheless. I will also admit that given any opportunity, I will sing God Save the Queen. I will include it in church services or wherever it is appropriate. Maybe even sometimes not so appropriate to include God Save the Queen. I'll also admit to having traveled many, many miles to visit Buckingham Palace in person. My favorite Canadian currency, anything with the Queen on it, truth be told. I will also admit that I have sat up a number of nights to watch royal weddings and funerals and ceremonies unabashedly. On one occasion, <clears throat> even going to McDonald's in the middle of the night to purchase English muffins so that I could have proper tea as I watched the wedding of William and Kate. I don't admit this to many people, but I know you'll keep my secret. Safe to say, I am a monarchist through and through. I come from a very long line of monarchists. My family came from the States in the 1700s up to Nova Scotia because they were United Empire loyalists. I dare say I am a hopeless cause. It is in my blood. Although this can irritate many folks, those who do not see the point of the monarchy, especially for us here in Canada. One thing I think we can all agree on is that our sovereign, Queen Elizabeth, has selflessly dedicated her life to others. She has given up her own free will to stand up for the duty that was thrust upon her at a very young age. And she has committed her whole life to serving her people in the Commonwealth, to serving the Church as a Christian. Today's parable in the Gospel of Matthew of the sheep and the goats snaps us to attention quicker than a royal marathon on TV might snap me to attention. And it draws on this same theme of self-sacrifice you see, Jesus is not gentle and mild this morning. He's rather abrasive. In this parable, we rightly hear contradictions. Jesus is clearly setting out a teaching that makes us bristle. He's talking about good versus bad, heaven versus hell, sheep versus goats. 
it would be tempting for us to sidestep this portion of the gospel. To sort of braze over it. To choose another reading for Christ the King Sunday. A reading that would make it easier for us to have it quickly done and dusted. Yea, King Jesus. This complicates matters. There's no mistaking it. You see, in this teaching, which is difficult to hear, there is an undercurrent that we must hear, and therefore we cannot bypass this parable. What Jesus is saying, without hesitation, in a crystal clear way, is that our lives, as the flock of Christ, as sheep in the kingdom of heaven, must be guided and shepherded by love, by God, who is love. Jesus says, as he says exhaustively and innumerable ways, that it must be the beginning and the end of all that we do as Christians. That God must bookend our existence. Love must bookend our lives. Every day of our lives, we must put love first. The central message of this parable is to care for one another, to give of ourselves selflessly, to build up, to strengthen those around us, to make this world a better place, here and now, never more important than where we find ourselves currently in the midst of pandemic. Although we cannot go about this love in our usual ways, delivering casseroles, hugging, even shaking hands, gathering as loved ones and friends, we are called not to allow this to hinder us, to step up and feed the hungry, quench the thirsty, clothe the naked, visit the lonely, attend to those who are in prison, By doing so, we offer ourselves to our King, to our Heavenly Sovereign, freely and wholly, which is the only worship God desires on this Sunday, the reign of Christ the King, and every Sunday, every day of our lives. To accept that gift given to us so freely, through Christ, and to turn around and give freely of ourselves. It is not enough for us to simply be card-carrying Christians, wearing it as a badge of honor. We must live our lives in this faith, dedicated to our sovereign. Now, whether we agree with the earthly monarchy the royal family and all of that or not, we are called to agree on this, that love must be our foundation, our offering to our King. And as enthusiastic as I am about all things royal, as big as that picture is in my office, as many lengths as I've gone to, to cater to my interest in the monarchy. My friends, it all pales in comparison to how I hope to serve my God, my heavenly sovereign, and to have that same enthusiasm and more for serving others in God's name. Amen. In response to our words from Scripture, 
We will be saying the new creed as our affirmation of faith. I invite you to join with me at home as we say. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. I would invite Nancy to lead our prayers of the people this morning. Um, our opening prayer this morning um, is from the Book of Alternative Services, um, and it will, be, it will begin and then we'll start our prayers together. This is a prayer for Christian life. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. So for the prayers of the people this morning, um, um, you will have your response after, Lord, in your mercy. Um, our response is, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the peace of the world. The Lord granted that we may live together in justice and faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Let us pray for this country, and especially for Queen Elizabeth, the Governor General, the Prime Minister, and all in authority. The Lord help them to serve this people according to his holy will. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Let us pray for children and young people. The Lord guide their growth and development. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Let us pray for the sick taking a moment to lift up the names of those known to us before God, either in silence of our hearts or aloud. Judy, oh. Marie, oh. Lyle, That's oh. James. <clears throat> Lord, deliver them and keep them in his love. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. Let us pray for all who are condemned to exile, prison, harsh treatment, or hard labor for the sake of justice and truth. The Lord support them and keep them steadfast. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We remember the prophets, the apostles, the martyrs, and all who have borne witness to the gospel. The Lord direct our lives in the same spirit of service and sacrifice. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. These things and many more we humbly pray in the name of Christ, our glorious King. Amen. Amen. Our collect for this reign of Christ Sunday. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, our Lord and King. Grant that the peoples of the earth, now divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his gentle and loving rule, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now gathering our prayers into one, we pray together as our Savior Christ has taught us and are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all of our understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and forevermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Our minute for mission this morning is entitled Experiencing Magic at Camp McDougall. There is no place like camp for campers and staff alike to live life to the fullest, experience the beauty and wonder of creation, and build meaningful relationships. Thanks to your gifts for mission and service, campers can continue to have meaningful experiences at camp, like Camp McDougall in Thessalon, Ontario. The Camp McDougall staff strive to have a positive effect on the lives of the young people spending time there, and they recognize the importance of their role in this experience and provide guidance, entertainment, leadership, example, and friendship. Making the most of this opportunity creates the ultimate camp experience for everyone. As a United Church camp, Camp McDougall is an entire entity both rich in tradition and dedication to encouraging new ideas. Throughout the years, many people have contributed a great deal of time and effort to make the camp what it is today. Board members, staff members, counselors, and even campers have had the potential to contribute to the ongoing development and success of this organization. Camp McDougall is blessed with the raw materials for a great summer. A fantastic location on the shore of Lake Huron, near Thessalon, an enthusiastic and capable staff, and most important, lots of excited campers ready to experience the magic. If mission and service giving is already a regular part of your life, thank you so much. If you have not given, please join me in making mission and service giving a regular part of your life of faith. Loving your neighbor is at the heart of our mission and service. Just a couple of words of announcements. We have a tradition here now, and it is a tradition because it has happened more than two Sundays in a row, of having flowers placed at the communion table each Sunday. They are given by family members and friends here in the congregation in memory of loved ones or in thanksgivings. Last Sunday, November the 15th, the flowers at the communion table were given to the glory of God by Myra, Dave, and family in memory of Myra's mother, Anna long-time choir member. And today the flowers are given to the glory of God by B. Betts and family in memory of Derek. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed through your mercy, O God, rest in peace. We give you thanks for those of you who give to beautify our worship space here. We also give thanks to those of you who continue to contribute to the mission and ministry of Nipawa United Anglican Shared Ministry, even when we are not gathered together on Sundays with a collection plate to be brought forward and blessed. So many of you have been so good to keep up your offerings. For this, may you be blessed. We give you our thanks. To those of you unsure of how to continue your offerings, you can always put a check in the mail or contact the office and arrange a time for something to be dropped off. We also encourage all members of our congregation, both United and Anglican alike, to sign up for PAR, the Pre-Authorized Remittance Program, 
whereby your offering, your tithe, is automatically debited from your account. This is a very seamless and easy way for you and also for those of us here who are struggling to keep up the finances of the church, to have um, a fiscal base on which we can count and predict. We thank you for making this ministry possible by your generosity. We also thank those who made the recording of this service possible. Dwayne on the camera, Judy in the sound booth, to our very talented musician, Carolyn, and to our reader, Nancy. It is a pleasure to be here, distanced in the church, and we look forward to when we can have you back here with us. Let us conclude with our final hymn, Voices United, number 211, Common Praise 378, Crown Him with Many Crowns.